Hey guys, welcome back to another foundation road test. I feel like it's been a minute since I have done one of these, so I'm ready to get back to it. This is on the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. I took a poll in my community section here on YouTube maybe a few weeks ago to see which foundation you wanted me to test next. The Maybelline Superstay, the new one, won that poll, but I can't find it locally anywhere and where I could find my shade, I ordered it, and it's not gonna be here until at least the first week of February. So that foundation road test will not be out until sometime in February. The runner up was the Wet n Wild Photo Focus, and you can see in my January Phase and Fails how that testing went. So the next option was the Jouer, which is not turned right, which has been sitting in my drawer, and I've been anxious to try it, but yet a little bit apprehensive at the same time. I am going to ask you to excuse the unmade bed behind me. I could not bear to disturb Luke, who is sound asleep somehow throughout this whole videoing process. He seems to be able to do that. If you are not familiar with my foundation road tests, I do not do first impressions. I do not just test them for one day and then say yay or nay. I test them over a few days at least to see how I like to apply them best and what primer I like them with, what powder I like them with. I just like to test them in various ways so I can come back and tell you guys how they work best for my particular skin type. And you can do what you will with that information. My skin type is combination oily, and over 40. So there's all kinds of challenges with that particular skin type, trying not to emphasize lines or pores. Sometimes I get some little dry, patchy areas up here that's nice and fun. So I just let you guys know how these foundations work for me. If you have not hit that subscribe button, if you're not a regular here, I would love for you to do so and be a part of the family. We have a great community here and I do regular foundation road tests among many different other types of videos too. And give this video a thumbs up. As I always do, I'm going to read you a little bit about the foundation before I get into my application and wear test. This foundation can be found on Jouer's website or beautylish.com. It retails for $38 for 0.68 ounces of product, which I will touch on later. And there are 17 shades. What's on the website is that it claims to have supreme coverage lightweight wear and be long wearing. It creates an impeccable airbrushed matte finish instantly. And all you have to do is smooth a small amount, much less than the typical foundation onto their brush that they have. It's called the Essential Precision Foundation Brush and buff it in to reveal your perfect complexion. I did not get that foundation brush because I have several of these toothbrush type brushes and that's what it is. So I figured I would just use one of mine that I like to apply the foundation when I tested it out that way. It contains chamomile extract, cucumber extract, hyaluronic acid, tripeptide complex. It's matte, oil-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, and vegan-friendly. And I think that's all we need to know as far as the claims of this foundation. I'm gonna cut to my application of today's foundation. I forgot to bring it down to my neck because I'm really just doing this to show you guys how it applied and I need to check in for you because this foundation road test is a little bit different than my other ones. I usually check in over the course of several days. I just started a new job and I just kept forgetting to check in when I would try this. So bear with me on this one. I am going to give you a good representation today of what it looks like on a regular daily basis when I check in because it's very consistent for me throughout the day as far as performance goes every single time that I've tried it. So we can cut to that application and then I will get into the check-ins and then the summary at the end. I already have on my primer. I am trying out this Becca Velvet Blurring Primer. I have not used this before, so this is kind of new. It's got my fingerprints all over it, which is really nice. But this is why I try things out multiple days and with multiple primers because I don't know, I'm kind of trying both of these out. I have had a rosacea flare up off and on over the past week or so from using a skincare product. I'm hesitant to say what it is because it's one of a couple and until I narrow it down, I'm not gonna say anything. So the tip of my nose on this side has been very, very red. I feel like it's somewhat calm right now and I'm kind of healing from some things here 
and here I have my usual sunspot here, sunspot here, and then my little birthmarks going on here. So just from a coverage level, I wanted you to know what I was dealing with. I did already put corrector underneath my eyes. I don't always do that before foundation. I don't know why I did it today, but I did. And that's it. So we're gonna go right in, but I wanted to show you how little foundation is needed for coverage. The first thing I always do is shake it up pretty well. And then I pump out about a half a pump onto the back of my hand. I don't even need a full pump, which is why I'm not really worried about the size of this bottle and the amount of foundation that's in here. I think initially it seems expensive for the amount it is, but you really don't need a lot. I find it's liquidy. It's not too runny, but it's not thick like a normal full coverage foundation is when you think of a full coverage foundation. So then as usual with full coverage foundations, I use a damp beauty blender and I just dab a tiny bit onto this beauty blender. I cannot emphasize tiny bit enough. Oh, I forgot to put my hair up. Okay, don't laugh at me because I have my sunglasses on to hold my hair up because I was out running around and I have my sunglasses on and I figured they would work just as well as anything else to hold my hair back. So that's what I'm using. As with most full coverage foundations that tend to set a little more quickly than other foundations, I am going to apply this section by section and then as I go blend each section into the one that I just applied. I don't like to dot foundations like this all over my face and then blend it because they can set too quickly and then you're left with cakiness and patchiness and it can stick to dry patches and things like that. So I'm just going to dab this in and you saw how little was on my beauty blender. So that's definitely medium to full with that tiny amount on the beauty blender and I'm gonna apply it like that all over the face and then come back and chat. So for every day, medium to full coverage, this is what I get from that tiny amount of foundation. It's completely gone off my hand. And I don't even think that that was quite a half a pump. If I want to build it up, it's easy to do. I could have started with the full pump, but I may not even need this much for what I'm going for. I just find it's really buildable and it doesn't seem to emphasize anything bad on my skin when I build it. I find I get a little texture right here, and I hope that you can see that, but I'm not getting any of that texture at all from this foundation. So what I did for full coverage, I just layered it where I wanted it, which was on my nose on the sunspots. It pretty much covered that bright red birthmark. I really didn't so much worry about this one. I could have covered that more, but you know, I don't really care. I don't even think I have anything left on here. I covered a couple of red spots over here. I think I need to put a little bit of concealer on that, but I'm not really worried about it. That is just part of my face. That is the coverage that I am getting for an everyday application and actually even for special occasions. So I'm going to put on the rest of my makeup, come back and show you what it looks like once I'm all done. We'll finish with the foundation road test after that. I realized that I forgot to point out the coverage on the tip of my nose when I was talking earlier because it totally covered it and I wasn't even thinking about it. I didn't use any concealer on my face anywhere, not my nose, not my sunspots, not anywhere except for under my eyes. I think my brows are a little strong, a little dark today. That's okay. I just wanted you to see this application and I'm going to check in today outside, I think, and just show you what it looks like on a typical day where I do that medium to full coverage and I might build it where I need it. And it does save time on concealer when I do that. So I'll get back to you when I check in. Go figure, I forgot to check in during the day today. My day completely got away from me, but it has been nine hours and it is still very much on my face. I've been leaning on my chin, so don't look at my chin. But um, yeah, it's pretty much everywhere else and I've had a really busy day. So I will do another day in show check-ins. I just wanted to show you about two hours after application, haven't touched up, and I use no concealer today. It's pretty consistent no matter what powder and no matter what primer I use. So I just used something different today, no particular reason. I am going to check in later to show you how it wears after several hours. And this is what we have going on during the day today looks really good. So I feel like I'm getting to where I need to blot, not because I feel like I'm excessively shiny, but because I need to film and shine can look a little weird on camera. It's been three and a half hours and I feel like if I was just walking around town or running errands or out and about and trying to turn my face so you can see, 
I don't think that I would be bothered by this amount of shine. It looks good. It's not gathering in any fine lines. I'm getting a little closer. Nothing is breaking up at all. And it's not excessively shiny. It's kind of just beside my nose a little bit and a little bit in the center of my forehead. I can't point to it because I'm holding a mirror with one hand and the phone with the other. So that's really the only reason why I am going to blot and I think I'm only going to use a blotting sheet. I'm not even gonna use powder. Hey guys, I'm hitting nine hours, a little over nine hours with this foundation and it still looks good. It's still intact. I just wanted to give you the update. I've only touched up or blotted with translucent powder and a blotting sheet once and that was really to film. It never really looked super shiny and oily and I probably would have had to have blotted at some point, maybe about the four hour mark. I don't typically go for full coverage foundations because they typically look very mask-like for me. I think there's a lot of people that really like full coverage foundation and that goes with their everyday look. It just doesn't really go with my everyday look. This is a foundation, a full coverage foundation that I really like and I'm surprised that I like it. Like I said in the beginning, I let it sit in my drawer for a while because I just didn't wanna try it because it's so full coverage I thought I wouldn't like it and that I couldn't walk around with this foundation on. Now, it's not going to be a daily wear foundation for me because it is more made up than I typically wear my foundation on a daily basis. I don't typically try and cover every single thing on my skin on a daily basis, so I'm just getting that out there up front. But for a really long day where I need something to last a long time, or for a day where I have an event at the end of the day and I need to look really nice and polished, and I need a foundation that is going to come through for me all day long, this would be a really good option for that. So this is more of a special occasion foundation for me. What I like about it is that it does look not full coverage, even though it is full coverage. It doesn't look mask-like and it doesn't feel heavy. Sometimes really full coverage foundations, even on combination oily skin, can still make your face feel dry and tight and it really doesn't. It does feel lightweight and it's probably due to the tiny amount that you need. I'm actually shocked at the tiny amount that I need. It doesn't settle in my fine lines at the end of the day and it just feels good all the way through the end of the day. Sometimes with full coverage foundations at the end of the day, I start feeling that grease break through and then the foundation cakes up and it just looks nasty. This one looks really good and without a setting spray. I am not one, which you may know by now, but I don't rely on setting sprays all the time and I don't use them when I'm doing foundation road tests because I don't wear them all the time. And I tend to think that sometimes you guys may or may not like them and may not wear them. And the large reason why is because a lot of them contain alcohol and I just don't like spraying that on my face every day. Some of them don't, I have a few here that don't. I feel like I don't need a setting spray for this to perform the way it's supposed to, which I really enjoy. I'm looking in the mirror, just trying to see if I'm forgetting anything. It doesn't settle in fine lines. It doesn't emphasize my pores. I feel like it worked well with my primers, with my powders. I can't say that it worked better with a specific primer because I tried it with a bunch of different primers the way I usually do. Today I have it on with my Hourglass Veil, but I've worn it with illuminating primers as well, and I feel like it's looked really nice. I don't feel like you really get the benefits of the illuminating primers because it kind of hides the illumination in a way, but mixing in an illuminating primer or maybe an illuminating foundation or something like that might give you that glowy look from this if you wanted to do that. I do feel like there might be a little bit of flashback. So your mileage may vary with that. The powder that I used today is the MAC Patrick Star Collection. I love that powder, but I haven't really tested that to see if there's flashback on a regular basis. I'll put that info in the down bar. I also like that if I have an event that I need to get ready for quickly and I don't want to spend a lot of time with concealer, this is good to have on hand. I'm one that usually wears medium to full coverage foundations like Estee Lauder Double Wear. 
Bare Minerals, Bare Pro, Too Faced, Peach Perfect, couldn't think of the name for a second, for those types of events, which are more medium to full. And I do spot conceal sometimes with those if I have something that I wanna conceal. With this, I probably really wouldn't have to do anything unless there's something weird going on. That is pretty much, I think, the gist of this foundation road test. I've been, uh, more impressed with this than what I thought I would be. If you want a full coverage foundation, but you don't want to feel like your foundation is caked on, you don't want to look like it's caked on, this might be a great option for you to look at. It does seem pricey for the amount you get, but I have never used another foundation where I use as little product as I do with this. So I actually think you're getting more for your money than you think you are with this product. So that's pretty much it for this foundation road test. It was a success for me. I enjoy this foundation. I would love to know what you think. Have you tried this? If so, do you like it? Why or why not? Do you plan on trying it? Do you have a full coverage foundation that is your go-to already? I'd love to know what that is and your thoughts. So thank you so much for watching and I will put my social media in the description box down below and on the screen. I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Uh -oh.